Okay, that's it now start the rollout level. Yeah. Okay, and then just gonna pull those up a little bit because you're sinking Hello guys, it's a new day in the sim here in Brunei and after last night's flight experience there was a few technical glitches with the sim which we need to fix today. So I need to get the sim opened up and show you what's happening. You can probably see the fault from there. What happened last night was we've managed to disconnect the yokes and obviously the downside of my design was you cannot take them past 90 degrees, otherwise they lock out in reverse. This is going to require the floor lifted up and a redesign to make sure that the stops can be added to stop you from actually taking it past 90 degrees. Should be a quick fix, let's see how we get on. While I'm taking this yoke apart, I really wish that there was a quick disconnect here so we could actually just completely remove the yoke. The quick disconnect is all the way down here in the base of the floor, which is pretty useless. So for the time being, it's very unprofessionally going to have to hang from its wires. Here's the broken part. It's the shaft to the yoke. It's made from PLA and it was printed at 100%. So I think this time what we'll do is we'll print it in ABS and again at 100% and hopefully that'll be even stronger. Now to stop this from happening, the reason why this actually happened in the first time was because it, the pilot in command at the time locked the controls out past the 95 degree point and then obviously put all his effort back in to get them back. Let's get on the computer, let's find the file, let's reprint it, and let's get this fixed. We're reprinting the new shaft as we wait now. The problem is, to stop this from happening again in the future, we need to be able to stop the roll channel from swinging past the no return point. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a set of stop screws that can be adjusted to the absolute best point we need to allow full operation but not interfere with the controls itself. And my idea is we're going to add a lug onto this and two stop screws top and bottom which can be easily adjusted. And it currently sits like that. So first of all I want to create an offset plane and we'll just give it one millimeter away from the surface so it doesn't interfere. Then we're going to draw a lug I think and if I go capture that surface there project that surface and hopefully this will give the lug that we can now extrude yeah. 10, 10. That looks quite good. Okay. Just make it look a little bit prettier. So there's the first part of the idea. Switch the bearing back on, switch the housing support, and now we need to make the stops in the bearing support. So I've just checked, and 90 degrees is the exact angle where it locks out. So anything below that is good. And what we'll do is the adapter shaft that we've just created, we'll now copy that twice, but we'll rotate it to its maximum point. There. 
and I think we can already see an issue. This is probably going to interfere. Oh, that's close. Nicely done. Okay, what you're looking at now are the maximum points of travel that need to be applied. And we're simply going to fit a screw, top and bottom. How are we going to do that? Wow, good question. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to create some stops on this surface here. I'm going to project it. I quite like that shape. That and that. There we go. Click OK. It's probably also going to... So if I do an offset of this line here, I'm going to go back to... Draw it down. The only reason I projected that surface there was because I want the midpoint. And this is where the screw will act on. One there. One there. And let me extrude this surface to there. And then I want to join it. And I don't really like this. That's more like it. Okay, so bear with me while I tidy this design up a bit. I'm not happy with how this looks here. So I'm just going to do some quick readjustments. So there's our stop block. Let's put our adapters back on now. Uh huh. There we go. E adapters back off. Going to drag those holes through. It's where our screws are going to go. There'll be adjustable screws that can go in and out to set the exact angle we require. Now, all we've got to do make it look a bit prettier. Let's turn those sketches off. I'm going to fill it this top edge as well. Let's put a two on that. Uh, that's looking a bit better. Hopefully you're getting to see the general idea. So I put the adapter shafts back on now and all we need are two M4 bolts and there we have it. We can get rid of those two adapter shafts, put the real one in and that should stop our controls from going too far. Let's get this printed. Good morning guys, it's Sunday morning here in Brunei and we're heading out to the workshop to see how the printers are doing. Well. I already know from the CCTV footage that it's been a complete disaster overnight. The last time I checked was when I went to the bathroom at 4 o'clock in the morning. Everything was good on the uh, image then. However, let me turn you around. And we've got a spaghetti monster. Whoa. Now that really must have happened just after 4 a.m. to get that much of a mess so quickly. And here's my other printer, this is the version 2 and it's got low nozzle temperature which means it's offline for the foreseeable future. Let's see if we can figure out what went wrong with this one. So it looks like it got to a certain point and we had some serious warpage of the bed. I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to lay it down on its side so it's got a bigger surface area on the bed and hopefully it won't warp as much. Let's give it a go. That was actually the third time I printed that design on there and the third time it's failed. So there's no point continuing trying a fourth time. Let's try something different. So first up, we've got to remove the old shaft from the bearing assembly. It's obviously broken in two halves as it is. Now if I remember right, I actually put a lot of force putting this on. 
tappy tappy hammer. Bearings are sorted, and that can go in the bin. Now we've got to get the other part of the shaft out. So the first thing I'm noticing is that that is actually quite a slack fit. I want it nice and tight to prevent any play. So what I'm going to do is use a bit of masking tape again just to increase the thickness. I'm just going to trim the excess masking tape off. On goes our spacer and then Back on with the gear. So there's our repaired shaft, all ready to go. Time to move on to the modification to stop this from happening again. And hopefully, just to do the two rub screws, slide the gear off, tappy tappy. To stop the nuts from falling out, I'm just going to apply a dab of super glue because they're a little bit loose on this print. In goes the bearing. That's a nice tight fit. And finally, the securing screw. Hopefully the screws are going to slide in in a nice tight fit. Let's see what the fit of the shaft into the bearing is. And once again, it's a bit too small. I think what's happened is, before all these parts were printed in PLA, these are ABS, and I think these must have shrank a lot more. I'm guessing they've, they've shrank a lot more than the PLA parts. Well guys, I've just noticed there's a cable hanging across this video the whole time. I've moved it now, just, and, uh, I have to apologise for that. It's now time to take these parts inside and see if we can get them fitted. That feels good. What we're going to do now is tighten the mounting bolts up into a good position. Align the yokes. Let's centre the yokes and then hopefully lock off these bottom bevel gears. Now you've got a positive stop to tell you that that is 90 degrees. It's actually not 90 degrees, it's probably about 87. 87 that way, 88 that way, pretty close. Well guys, I think that's the end of this episode. We fixed the broken shaft in the dual controls, replaced that with ABS rather than PLA, even though I'm pretty confident that's not gonna break again, hopefully, because there'll be no need for the controls now to lock out by taking them too far. The mod was under the floor of the captain's seat, 
That's been done and I shall publish that to the net very shortly. The next mod I need to do is for the J-Rail seat. Yes, it's fine going backwards and forwards. However, there's just a bolt down here that locks into position to stop it from moving. Very crude and I think we can 3D print a proper track and rail that will hold the seat in the correct position. Need to get that done so the seat's nice and easily adjustable, even though it, the seat itself is temporary. I'm also creating the 3D printed EFIS and 3D printed FMC right now. They're going pretty well, it's just taking a bit of time. Of course, every time I make an adjustment to the design, I need to print it, and that takes a serious amount of time. Take care, guys. I'll catch you later. Sim out.